born in 1948 in a Christian Maronite family in Beirut, studied in American University on political science, become U.S. citizen and wife of a World Bank executive. Now, First Lady of Afghanistan, wife of Ashraf Ghani, speaking on the occasion of Convocation 2017 of Asian University for Women. She also conferred honorary PhD by the same university. When I sat down to write the speech, I, uh, I was really starting to get very worried about the state of affairs in the region, the Middle East, Central Asia, and South Asia. It's as if uh, everybody's being pit against each other. It's as if somebody or some forces are intent on destroying our cultural heritage, our monuments, our, our traditions. It's as if people don't want us to live in peace. So peace was a little bit on my mind. And although I might be repeating a lot of things that have been said before, keep in mind that it is in a slightly different context. In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, my dear younger sisters, distinguished audience and member of the various boards, I come to you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. It gives me immense pleasure to be here with you today to celebrate the accomplishment of the graduating class of 2017. I feel honored to have been invited to address you in, on this very important day of your lives. You have indeed reached a milestone. Until yesterday, you were young, bright girls seeking knowledge and learning about the world. Today, you are being recognized as young adult women, educated and resourceful, and ready to take on the world. It is a big, it's a very big responsibility for me to be sending you into the world with a few words of wisdom. I may have the years and the white hair to claim that I'm wise. Still, I will not presume to tell you what to do. The choice is yours, and each one of you needs to assess her own situation before deciding what course to take. What I can do is to point to all the skills you have acquired and all the tools you now possess and how much intellectually richer you now are and how you can put to use your acquired knowledge. You have acquired a multitude of academic skills. By now, you should be comfortable dealing with any sort of written text. You can parse it, you can analyze it, you can criticize it, you can decide what part of the text you'll make your own and what part you will dismiss. Based on this experience, you can now use your pen to write analytically, persuasively, or even mockingly. In other words, you have learned to discern other people's thoughts, and at the same time, you have mastered the art of expressing your own thoughts convincingly. You have also learned how to research a topic. Indeed, today, with the internet at the tip of our fingers, it is no longer necessary to remember every little iota of knowledge we come across, but it is indispensable to know how to dig for that knowledge in the various databases and search engines. Because learning is a lifelong process 
and should never stop. I never did, and that makes life much more interesting. You have also been given a solid understanding of the subject you have been studying, whatever they may be. Think of it as a wealth of vicarious experiences you can learn from. For instance, in politics, you were introduced to various political systems and how they evolved. Should you decide to enter politics, you can draw lessons from the experience of those who preceded you. Similarly, if you studied economics, for example, you are taught about the various economic models and their respective manifestations. Should you engage in economic activities, all those lessons learned will help you shape your own professional decisions. But in addition to those academic skills, you have also benefited from life-changing experiences. And this is something that I'm repeating after so many other, but it's extremely important. From the confined and secure environment of your childhood, you have moved into a wider arena. Far from your family, you have learned to fend for yourself and assume your responsibilities. You have matured, and now you appreciate even more the family support you enjoyed as a child. I hope that you are deriving from this experience a better understanding of the positive role a family can and should play. This is extremely important because families, sound families, are the pillars on which a sane society can be built and flourished. I think a lot of problems in society today derive from the fact that we have too many broken families. For four or five years, you have shared a roof with girls from all over Asia. You have had a chance to interact with them and to experience how different and yet how similar they are to you. You have discovered new cultures and new traditions, and I certainly hope you have learned to accept and respect each other's particularities. You now understand that the world is made of many different parts that can enrich each other through harmonious coexistence. As you contemplate life ahead of you, do not be scared by the multitude of problems that are facing the world in which we are living. On the contrary, approach the world with calm and confidence because you have been given the tools to face those problems and figure out how to solve them. Here I'm reminded of a uh, sentence I read once in a, in a magazine in a doctor's waiting room, and it said, if you keep looking at the obstacles, you will never see the road. And that's really so important. There are obstacles anyway. Just keep seeing the end of the road, the goal that you have set for yourself and carry on. You have been groomed to become the future leaders of your generation. Leaders who will relentlessly attempt to make the world a better place. So when life turns hard and problems accumulate, remain positive and let every challenge turn into an opportunity for improvement and transformation. Uh, I can't seem to remember exactly, but in the past 24 hours, I was talking to a group of uh, young women, probably my, uh, my Afghan Afghan co-citizen, I don't know how to say it in English, but anyway, Hamwatan. Uh, yes. When I first came to uh, the palace to Arg, uh, we have a little residence, and I stayed at home for a couple of weeks, but I can't stay without doing anything. I mean, I. After two weeks, watching TV and re reading books was becoming boring. 
So I decided to open that office. And, uh, and then I realized that for security purposes, apparently I've become a, I'm no, I, do not, I no longer belong to myself and I cannot do everything I want to do. And I'm confined to stay within the four walls of the art. Fortunately, it's a large campus with beautiful gardens, so I should not really complain. But uh, being a journalist by, uh, by profession, I like to know what's happening. And so I looked at the situation where I was not free of my movements. I said, well, if I cannot move, maybe pe people can move and come, and come and see me. And I turned what was a challenging situation into a wonderful opportunity of having an open doors policy. And now people come from all four corners of Afghanistan to see me. So that's one example of how you turn a situation that might look bleak and uh, um, difficult to uh, adjust to, you turn it into an opportunity. And uh, it's a wonderful thing for me because I get to see a lot of people. I wanted also to share with you that uh, um, um, I'm being reminded of an observation by uh, Christine Lagarde, that masterful woman who has been leading the International Monetary Fund for more than a decade, the IMF. And one day we were sitting at the table at the same conference, and she told me that there is very little difference between an optimist and a pessimist. When, to, when it comes to the accuracy of their predictions. They both get it wrong, she said. <laughs> Yet, a major difference is that pessimists feel miserable throughout their life, while their <laughs> optimists end up enjoying every minute of it. <laughs> so you, the class of 2017, You, the class of 2017, have a reason to be optimist. In a world that has lost its balance and, which, and in which the concept of world order <coughs> seems to have disappeared, even in the West, I mean, we've had Brexit, we've had Trump, I, mean, anyway, I don't need to tell you all this. <laughs> So, in a world that has lost its balance and in which the concept of world order seems to have disappeared, in a world where no corner has been spared from violence and upheavals, you have been privileged to experience firsthand the benefits of a multicultural, multi ethnic, multinational environment. It is now your turn to go out there. And in whatever role you choose to fulfill, big or small, stand up to the currents of factionalism and discord. Stand up to those who want to pit one group against another, one religion against another, one ideology against another, one country against another. Draw from your personal experience of the past five years here at the Asian University for Women, during which you have ascertained that despite our diversity, we are all alike. We are all human beings worthy of respect and dignity. Stand up for a unified world. Stand up for an inclusive world. Stand up for an integrated world where diversity is a source of enrichment Stand up for peace. For indeed, peace is worth fighting for. Congratulations.